everyone. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the session Autosave and Concurrent Editing in Drupal 8. Uh, my name is Christo Chonov. Uh, I am a senior software developer and uh, one of the official co-maintainers of the Drupal 8. I'm a senior software engineer and one of the official Drupal 8 core uh, co-maintainers for the Entity API. Uh, I am the author and main maintainer of several Drupal modules, including the uh, two that I'm going to present now, how to say form and conflict, branch 2.x. Uh, I work for Biologist Genetic Information Management, a uh, company based in uh, Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, we are a Drupal contributor and stated us in the survey made by Dries in his blog post, who sponsors Drupal development. We are one of three uh, Drupal end users who are sponsoring the Drupal development. So let's start with how to say for. It's basically uh, like the name suggests, uh, a module that takes care of continuously auto-saving uh, an entity form. Uh, it basically consists of the user input and the state of the form. Uh, the module works out of the box, but there are several uh, configuration options, like uh, uh, the auto-save interval, how often the uh, uh, auto-save submission will be triggered, or to enable it on, only on specific entity types. Uh, currently, we support only content entity forms, but uh, with some custom code, it's possible to add support for uh, config entity forms as well. Uh, it basically works like a, uh, when it, uh, as it decorates the form builder in order to turn off all the form functionality of Drupal because we basically need a raw input and we want to prevent all kinds of validation or hook invocation. We just need the raw input and we want to prevent uh, the multi-step forms, uh, updating the form build ID and all the complexity. Uh, we just turn all that functionality off uh, and we create autosave states. They're based uh, there per user, uh, which means they're not shared uh, and uh, they represent drafts. A new state will be created each time a change is made. So it means if there are multiple autosave submissions, but they're uh, the page hasn't changed, then there will be no new autosave states. This uh, makes it possible to implement an undo array of functionality on top of it. Uh, the module behaves differently on entity saves, dependent on that, whether the conflict module is enabled or not. If it's enabled, then only the autosave session uh, for the current user and the current entity will be deleted. Otherwise, all autosave uh, sessions for this entity will be deleted because Otherwise, the user will, be, uh, will not be able to save the, the form anyway, because there will be conflicts, and without conflict, we cannot resolve uh, conflicts. Concurrent editing is not possible. Uh, some of the future tasks that are on our plan are to make it possible to save autosave states in the browser local storage so that we uh, preserve uh, bandwidth uh, and uh, also make it possible to save autosave states without an active internet connection. For example, when somebody is in the train and is working on an article. Uh, there are some core conversations about uh, implementing autosave states as forward revisions, which unfortunately have a lot of technical limitations, like not no constraints in the database for like missing values in specific fields, or what about non-revisionable entity types? Currently, out of form, uh, doesn't uh, care if the entity type is revisionable or not. Uh, so there, like I've mentioned, there is a core conversation uh, and it's being considered for inclusion in core. And for sure, your ideas are welcome. Uh, conflict. It makes the concurrent entity possible. We support all kinds of content entity types, no matter if they're revisionable or non-revisionable. And uh, we, like, with autosave, we haven't added support for conflict entity types. The reason is that we mainly work with content entity types as well as the most of the uh, Drupal users. At least we think so. That m must not be necessary. Uh, the fact uh, the, it's built basically as an entity handler which you can exchange and uh, uh, adapt to your needs. Uh, but basically, uh, it offers it registers a conflict entity builder uh, in the entity form. 
and then uh, conflict detection is being performed using a three-way comparison and for that we use three entities. The one is the initial entity that was, uh, has been used to generate the form, the other one is the entity that is being built from the current uh, form values and also the entity from the storage which might be already in a newer version. That's concurrent editing we are talking about. So after that, we offer some uh, default auto merging, and uh, we have uh, introduced recently an event system for extended conflict discovery and resolution. What we can auto merge are fields that are not enabled in the currently used entity form displays. Fields that the current user doesn't have access to even if they're enabled in the form display because they're not being shown and the user basically cannot change them. Translatable fields from other translations to make it possible uh, uh, that different translators edit different entity translations, which hasn't been possible in core until the introduction of conflict 2.x. Uh, we auto merge also entity metadata such as the change timestamp, revision metadata, and all kinds of stuff that actually happens under the hood in the entity API. Um, and at last, we also merge fields that have been changed in the current form or in the newest version. But we do not merge such fields if they have been changed at both places. Why? Because this is actually a conflict. Uh, so, And the extended mechanism for conflict uh, discovery and resolution is the event system that we use. We have two events. We have introduced two events for that. Uh, first, we fire the entity conflict discovery event, where we have the three entities that I've talked about, uh, named here left, right, and base, uh, and we add also a context. For example, the form, form state, form display, and eventually you can add revision branch metadata. The idea is that this system could be used also not only for uh, concurrent editing, but also for merging different revision branches. Uh, so. Uh, actually, there is uh, an issue on Drupal.org about something like this, and it's been made a patch out of conflict to include it in core. This system, this exact layer system. Uh, so, during that event, we build a list of uh, conflicting properties, and uh, after we are ready, then we fire another event for automatic uh, conflict resolution, uh, named Entity Conflict Resolution Event. There we have the same as in the previous one, but we have additionally the result entity on top of which we apply the changes, and we also have access to the conflict list, from which we can remove uh, the conflicting paths or fields after uh, we've uh, successfully um, resolved the conflict, automatically or in some way, semi-automatically or whatever. So, uh, we have basic support for manual resolution. Uh, we have uh, dialogue-based conflict resolution and inline-based. Dialogue-based is mainly for inline, um, nested inline entity forms where, uh, like in a dialogue, uh, the user is offered with multiple steps to um, resolve the conflict for each of the entities, or inline-based, which is mainly for regular entity forms. Uh, however, this is still work in progress. Uh, it works for us, uh, but if you need like a better user interface, then I'm going to need your help. Um, something that has been suggested uh, a while ago for conflict, but unfortunately I haven't had the time uh, to uh, work on that, but I still want to find that time, is uh, to make it possible to auto-merge uh, uh, text fields with DeFi lighting thanks to uh, this library, jQuery merge for PHP uh, It's been considered, I've told you already, for core inclusion. A patch has been made, uh, and that's as part of the uh, workflow initiative. So, uh, after I've talked a little bit about that, I'm just going to show it how it works. Uh, I've enabled both uh, um, just uh, both of the modules on my D7 installation, uh, 87 installation, and I'm logged in with two different users, Margaret and Grace. So I just go on the same entity forum, and I make some changes. For example, the preparation time 
uh, Grace thinks it should take 20 minutes, but uh, no, Margaret thinks it should take 20 minutes, but Grace thinks it should take only 10 minutes. So, like we see, when I exit the page and re-enter the edit form, I can resume the editing. The same will be offered to Margaret as well. So when I resume, here I have 20, and here I have 20, 10. Now when I save the form, the other user could theoretically still edit the form, like we see in the right corner, uh, uh, right down corner, uh, how to save submissions are being triggered. And now when I save, there is conflict. And I can either resolve the conflicts or start over. And uh, if I want to resolve the conflicts, then I have uh, this overview of the three versions that we had for the field. And uh, I can decide which one I have. Uh, I want to have and uh, just enter it, or I could enter like uh, value in between, like for example, seven, uh, 17 minutes. And uh, I have to confirm that I've reviewed this change, and then after that, I can save successfully. So that's basically how auto save and conflict work together uh, in order to offer uh, this editorial benefit. Oh, more please. Now. <laughs> uh, what about some more uh, complex examples? If you're having paragraphs and stuff like that, could you get any uh, uh, There was recent, uh, like I told you, I... Uh, could, could you repeat the question in the microphone? Oh, the question was uh, about uh, some more complex use cases, like when using paragraphs or... Uh, nested inline entity forms in general uh, and uh, we have our custom entity inline module which is also on Drupal org entity reference inline it's uh, in a development state uh, but we've tested it with it and it works perfectly there is some custom code that has to be uh, added but it's just a hook implementation and recently there was an issue on the issue queue of conflict 2.x uh, about paragraphs and uh, somebody <coughs> mentioned that it works when the paragraphs are open uh, open but it doesn't work when they're closed i'm not really sure how the closed functionality is implemented in paragraphs but it might be that there you don't have an entity form and then it doesn't work so in that case i might need uh, the support of the paragraphs maintainers because i'm not really aware of the uh, internal of paragraphs, but if uh, they're willing to, we can work together in order to make the module available for all paragraphs use cases. This could also work when uh, one user has multiple tabs open. Uh, sorry? When one user has multiple tabs, is editing the same document on two different tabs. Uh, uh, for autosave or? For a conflict. For conflict. Yeah, uh, that doesn't really work correctly right now because you have then dif different submissions. Uh, I'm not really sure how it will behave, but uh, there was an issue that we support that, and uh, I think uh, it will be hard. I think it uh, might be possible, might not, but it will be hard. I haven't thought on such a use case. So, uh, Layer Builder uses an entity form. And uh, so, does this work with Layer Builder? I'm it's not familiar with the Layer Builder, Layout Builder, unfortunately, so I cannot speak for that. Okay. Sorry. So probably what maybe some people could help and test that on Thursday or something. Is, yes, exactly. Yeah. And I, I will be all around, so if you want to, if there is something that doesn't work, feel free to contact me and we can work it out together. Yes, please? So the question is if there are a lot of fields. Yeah. Yes, sure, it works with a lot of fields. In order to spare time, because I have only 20 minutes, I've just shown one field, but it works with every field, actually. So I can have conflicts on all the fields, and uh, still uh, this inline uh, form will be shown everywhere. Yes, please. I don't hear you. Sorry. Come to the microphone. Um, 
the outset note form, right? It currently it only works on editing notes. It works for uh, all kinds of content entity types. Uh, and I think, you, because we are we currently uh, planning to use it on a project of ours, uh, it doesn't work when you go to note at. Yeah, that's, uh, there was a problem uh, for because of that, because it was defined, the rule for note at was defined through uh, the controller directive. And uh, I made an, an a patch for Drupal 88, and it was committed. Okay. So with Drupal 88, it will work out of the box ah, okay, for no that It should work out of the box. Okay. But there is also a patch uh, for that uh, on the issue queue that you have to apply yeah. as well. So this is a functionality that will be supported in maybe a couple of weeks. Okay, great. Thanks. Or you can support me and work with me on it. <laughs> great project. Thanks. Uh, yes, please. Again. Or uh, first the other one because you already had question. Uh, yes, please. Does it work with the blocks and the layout builder? Uh, layout builder. The question was said uh, placed previously. I am not aware of the layout builder, so I don't know. Uh, you please. Yeah. Um, my question is: Does it work for the workflow? I mean, when I enable workflow for this content. Uh, do you mean content moderation? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't. Uh, the, question? Uh, the question was if it works with content moderation, and unfortunately, it doesn't really work with content moderation. But the problems are in content moderation. I recently created an issue on content moderation for that, but it's basically for when editing the published version and not drafts. Uh, but I guess we might need to work with the content moderation uh, people and developers in order to uh, make it work uh, between balls because that. Basically, both create drafts, and it's just different way, and that are different concepts. So, yes, yes, please. Can I try you this yeah. Not sure I've done that work. No. Well, okay. Never mind then. Um, <laughs> we'll repeat the question. Yeah. So, uh, I was just curious if you have tested it with, or anyone has tested it with custom field types. So, as in, if you have a farm where. There is uh, fields which have been a module has defined like a custom field type and a custom widget. Would it work automatically with those, or would you need to do some? Would I, as a developer, need to do some modifications or perhaps some certain constraints with my field type to make sure it worked? Um, I would say we have one of the most complex uh, Drupal sites out there, so with a lot of custom widgets, uh, formatters, and everything, and it's better field tested. Okay, great. Uh, and the question was if we've tested it with custom fields and uh, custom uh, widgets. Any more questions? Okay. Anyone? Wait, 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 wait. If you want to learn more about what we do at our company, then uh, I would like to invite you on Wednesday uh, at another session from our company, uh, which starts at 9 o'clock. Uh, there you are going to be see really amazing stuff about genetic and uh, content management systems. And also, please come to our booth. We have brought an arcade machine. And if you play Pac-Man or any game and win the highest score, you can uh, uh, win uh, genetic analysis for free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's quite a useful demonstration. I've I've been looking at uh, potential at Thursday. There's an issue to get a um, a generic revision UI uh, yes. or the revision routes into core like the ones yes, in the one that yeah, no, for notes for all yeah. kinds of French types. So, so can you unplug your Yeah sure you